if you feel guilty about Eugen, and you've no wish to destroy him, why don't you stop right now? The arrow is already poised on the bowstring. How can I be able to stop now? The ceremony hasn't started. His Majesty hasn't lit the Jaws paper yet. You still have a choice to stop. Did you not come here today to have me executed for my crimes? If I had wanted you executed, I would be at the Xuanjing Bureau. I would not have come to dissuade you from this. You could have had me arrested. Yet now you are setting me free. I wonder how you wish to be repaid. <laughs> Return to your temple and pray your lordship. Let's just wait and see how things turn out in court. Sucha. Consideration always comes with a reason. You are letting me go, but wish for no repayment. I do not know what your true intention is. You have not forgotten Consort Chen for love, and Marshal Lin for loyalty. Only a rare few bear the kind of devotion that you have displayed. And I must save people like you. Just remember what I advised Marquis Yan. No more drastic action. As for the gunpowder, I will have them removed. I don't think... <sighs> that Prince Yu would send you here. He does not know about this. How did Prince Yu become worthy? of having a gracious man like you with him. I fear that before long, he shall have the throne. He's the son of your sister, the Empress. Why do you fear that he may be the next Emperor? Haven't you seen why? Keen and observant as you are. Prince Yu is no different from the Emperor. He reminds me so much of him especially during those times before the Emperor gained the throne. Just like the Emperor was, Prince Yu seems kind and virtuous, when in truth he's cruel and vicious, and loves no one else but himself. That is also perhaps why the Emperor favors him. You know I work for Prince Yu, your lordship. Aren't you afraid of saying things that will offend him? Why would I even care if I offend him? You're already holding me firmly by the neck. I am on your chopping board, like a rooster. You can very easily put me down if you wanted, but then... If you wish to control me because of what you have on Do not me, assume too much. I just wanted to know how you felt. As long as you don't take any drastic action, I will not ever bring this up again. All right, very well. I have another favor to ask. If ever any conflict occurs in the kingdom later, would you please save my son from any danger? After all, he is your friend. Brother Su. I made an agreement with your father. He'll stay up for New Year's Eve with you. After worshipping your ancestors. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Su. Perhaps tomorrow will be a better day.
Her Majesty's condition has greatly improved. The Imperial doctor has reduced the medicines. Her pulse is better now. But he said that she must not leave her bed until the new year. <sighs> Great. Noble Concert Yu must feel so satisfied. She even recommended Concert Shu to His Majesty as my mother's replacement. She had to take that chance to show off. All that should matter is for the Empress to finally recover. Thank you for attending to her. You're a source of patience. <laughs> Your Highness, we already found the answer to Minister Hurst's problem. Oh? So you found a suitable man? Mm. A vagrant, who looks almost exactly like Ha Wan Shin. We locked him up for days and kept him well hidden. The Earl won't be able to spot the difference. Mm. Your Highness, are we going for this? <sighs> what choice do I have? That worthless son of Minister Hu is so precious to him, so I'll have to help him. Show him the Vagrant for approval, before he's left at Chi Minh. Do it in secret. He does look like him. Minister Ha. Let's talk. You may leave us. Yes, sir. Are you satisfied? Yes. He may not look exactly like your son, Minister Ha, huh? but they are similar enough to deceive others. Thank you so much, ah, Minister Chi. Minister Ha, huh? why must you do that? We are contemporaries. There is no need for us to kneel. I know that, but you have saved my son. I'm grateful that you're giving him a second chance in life. This is a secret we must both keep. You must never breathe a word of this to anyone. Now I know that the new year is just a few days away. But your son cannot stay with you anymore or we will be discovered. That's why you must send him off as far away as you can. Of course. I will do that, Minister Chi. Do that first and you better hurry with it. Yes, Your Excellency. With the new year coming, all expenditures should be... So, He Jing Jung has gone back to work. I heard he could barely even stand because he was so ill. It is the Ministry of Personnel's busiest time. So I suppose it was Prince Yu's order that has forced him out of bed. He took to his bed. Because of his son's sentence, and no medicine can be able to cure that. <sighs> so you're saying Ha Jing Zhong is feeling better and has gone back to work again? Yes, Chief. He took to his bed just days ago. But now he's been looking quite lively. Prince Yu's source of fund is the Ministry of Personnel at this time of the year. Since he couldn't find a replacement for Ha Jing Zhong on such short notice, he could have ordered the Minister of Justice to help Hao Wen Shen in whatever way he can. What can he do about it? Hu Wen Shen will have to face execution unless he gets replaced by someone else. Why would they have the nerve to do that? Ha Jing Zhong must be feeling better for a good reason, which we'll soon find out. If Chi Min is really attempting that reckless plan, then I won't have to put up with those two ministers anymore. Once we leak this news to Shi Yu, the Eastern Palace will then be taking care of the rest for us. <laughs> so for a worthless personnel minister... Prince Yu would use that outrageous plan of replacing the prisoner. Very well. It would also serve him right to lose his justice minister. Chi Min did it surreptitiously. We were just fortunate to have learned about it. During that time, He Jing Jong managed to sneak his son out of jail. He could have sent him out of the capital right away. But he brought Ha Wan Shin back home instead. I don't know why he has to keep him there. It's because Ha Jing Jong's mother has always adored her grandson. I guess she just wanted to see him for the last time. Um, but all the better. Since now we'll have the chance to bring Earl Wen Yuan along with us. And once we catch them at Ha Jing Zhou's residence, Prince Yu will have to face a very bleak new year. <sighs> 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 
Go on. You have to hurry. But father, I don't want to leave. It's almost the new year. Why must you send me away? Son, you have to leave. I'm doing this for your sake. I've been repeatedly told by Minister Chi not to keep you here until the new year. Now leave while you can, while it's still dark. Minister! <laughs> what are you doing? Let me go! It's rather late for your precious son to be out here. So where are you sending him? Have mercy. Have mercy. Well, Earl, when you are, you just witnessed how the personnel and the justice ministers have been conniving with each other. Thank you, Your Excellency. I would have never known it if it weren't for your help. I shall report this matter to the Emperor right away. No, please don't. Have mercy, Earl. Come on. Oh, I am taking you to the Emperor myself. Let's go. Please, Father, Earl, move it. Want, it. Father, help me, me please, Father, please. Please, you will have mercy on Father, me. Help. Please. Jingri. Hey, Jingri. Eugen, have you heard about what happened? Wait, what happened? Remember Ha Wen Shin, the one who murdered the Earl's son? Yes. But he's in jail facing execution. Well, his father, Minister Ha Jing Jung, must have lost his head. Imagine he conspired with the Minister of Justice to spare his son from execution by replacing him with someone else. That's preposterous. Well, that's what they did. Chimin is so audacious, he must have been doing this all along. Eugene, that sort of thing should be kept in secret. How did you know about it? <laughs> they were caught thanks to your father. And it's no longer a secret. Everyone in the capital knows about it. What? It was Shei Yu? We've been so discreet about the replacement. How did he find out? It no longer matters how he found out about it. Your Highness, Earl Wen Yuan took He Jing Zhang to the Emperor, and he's accusing me as accomplice. And now, all censors are writing their complaints against me. Your Highness, I need you to help me get out of this mess. Your father, Marquis Chi, was very stern about it when Earl Wen Yuan dragged Ha Ching Jung to the court to accuse him that night. It was outrageous that the Emperor could not defend those ministers, even if he wanted to. I mean, they're vital officials of the court, so why are they so corrupt? Why are they even officials? How can they help the Emperor rule this way? Is that the fault of the officials? The Emperor is the source. Clean sources make clean streams, while turbid sources make turbid ones. How is our kingdom now? We live in times where honesty and devotion are now considered naive and childish. That's what we've become. And who caused all that? You know that it was very enlightening. I never thought you cared about the kingdom and be that passionate about it. So you are now my master. Hey, will you stop teasing? Actually, they weren't my ideas. Are they Brother Seuss? When we're back at Langzhou, we talk about the kingdom and how to make things better. So when you chose to work with Prince Yu, I couldn't understand it. Well, he doesn't have much of a choice. Who else is there apart from the crown prince? Brother Su always said that the kingdom needs someone who's truly virtuous to take over the throne. A good emperor would find good officials, although I'm afraid that Mother Sue might have already lost all hopes to find a virtuous lord in the court. Hey, Jingri. Do you think Brother Sue is not up to something else? Like what? I might have just imagined it. It sounds too strange. You've always been strange. I don't think he's been supporting Prince Yu at all. Why do you even say that? Just a feeling. Prince Yu was resting on his laurels after that debate in court. So he wasn't expecting Shi Yu to break both his arms because of Ho Wen Shin. <laughs> that must really hurt him. It's a bad start for Prince Yi this coming year. Filling those two ministerial positions will be interesting once the New Year celebration is over. Nevertheless, 
Wouldn't the Crown Prince be prevailing over Prince Yu? The Crown Prince would not have prevailed without his strongest force, Chi Yu. Are you saying you plan to take Shi Yu down? I'm quite prepared for it. His Majesty is now bestowing the awards to the Crown Prince and the other princes together with the shares of their respective families. Thank you, Father. Your Majesty, the awards have been handed out at Function Palace. And how were the awards? Almost the same as the past years. The Crown Prince garnered most of the awards. Prince Yu only garnered a little less than him, although it is undeniable that he received so much more compared to the other princes. He is really well favored by the Emperor. Well, he is the Prince of Seven Pearls. He deserves that special treatment. This year, Prince Jing was given an additional award. That was for the case he solved. Let's not take that for granted. In your free time, search for the butterfly hairpin I have here. Then give it to Concubine Jing. Yes, Your Majesty. Your Highness looks so beautiful. You look so elegant in that attire. Since the Empress will not attend the annual feast, why don't you wear the Five Phoenix hairpin? Are you trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> No, Your Highness. Your Highness has no need for that. She's a natural beauty. Even without makeup, the Emperor has always favored her. And besides, her son will inherit the throne. It's just a matter of time before she can wear whatever hairpin she likes. That sounds better. Let's join the feast. Father, mother, uncle, aunt, may you all have a happy new year. All right, get up. Come over here. Here. Thank you, Mother. Mother, I feel very jealous of him. You're not just giving a red envelope to Jingri. I've heard you've sewn him a complete attire. Thank you, Mother. Brother, Happy New Year to you, too. Hold <laughs> it. I don't have a red envelope for you. No need for that. He can't give you any money now, because he spent them all on the Fergana horse he bought you. Isn't that right? I was meaning to surprise you tomorrow. But your sister just had to say it ahead of me. <laughs> really? Thanks, brother-in-law. Eh, I'm sure you always get the best presents. Whenever he's around, no one notices me at all. Hmm? <laughs> Very well, Shibi. Whatever I have, take what you like. See that, brother? He always does that. Now I'm feeling bad about being jealous of him. Shabby, stop teasing Jingri all the time. And besides, we haven't forgotten your presents. Now come greet us a happy right. new year. Isn't it nice to see just how well they get along? Hmm. <laughs> Father, Mother, Uncle Cho, Aunt Cho, may you all have a happy new year. My respected forefathers, our family has always been wise teachers. We have had three imperial tutors, two empresses, and two chancellors. We have all done our best to serve the imperial kingdom. Eugene, do you believe that I and your ancestors have been loyal officials? Yes, father. We have all been devoted officers. But look at where all that devotion brought us now. Father... Wait, what are you saying? <sighs> I am done with my prayers. Come on. Father... Mm. Will you be heading to your bedroom now? Or do you wish to spend time with your alchemy work? It's the New Year's Eve, son. Let's have some food ready, and wait for the arrival of the new year together. 
<laughs> All right, I have our food ready. <laughs> Happy New Year. Very good. Take this. Be a good boy this year. Mm. Everyone, I would like to raise a toast to you all. May you all be endowed with good health and happiness. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Oh, I forgot you. Oh, uh, sorry, Dr. Yan. May you have a happy new year. Oh, doctor, don't frown. It's already New Year's Eve. Just this year, can't you even give me a smile? <laughs> uh, just look at yourself. You dared wish for good health when you haven't been looking after your own health. Yes, you're right. Then I won't disobey your orders this year. I'll do whatever you tell me. How's that? Hmm. It's about time you did. <laughs> Here are the dumplings. Uh, take this platter. Thank you, Auntie G. Here. Wow. Wow. This looks good. Here, Chief. Thank you. Oh, Auntie G, Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year, Chief. <laughs> Let's eat. Oh, here, Doctor. Have this. Hmm. Oh. Thank you. There's no more left. Come here. Liga, have some. Your Majesty, yes. how about another New Year's drink? All May right. you stay forever young. <laughs> oh, why, thank you. Cheers to that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Good moves. Your Majesty, huh? um, I'm afraid it's almost midnight. Oh, oh, right. Uh, uh, the dishes to be delivered to our listed yes. officials. For the twelve manners, deliver these twelve dishes. Very oh, wait. Well. Let's see that. I want you to give, uh, here, the pigeon egg dish to Muche. All well, right? Your Majesty, the Moo Manor already has a dish. They're among the twelve on our list. Yes, I know. They've earned an extra award for this year. So they get one more dish. Yes, Your Majesty. All right. <laughs> Commander Mung. Eunuch Gao. Just like always, you and your men are guarding the palace at New Year's Eve to keep us safe. I am grateful for that. No need for flatteries. It is my duty. <laughs> the Emperor is awarding 13 dishes this year to be delivered to 12 official manners. So I'm afraid I will need some of your men to escort us again. 13 dishes? The Emperor has awarded two special dishes to Moo Manor this year. Men, go escort them. Eunuch Gao, please. Well, it's almost midnight anyway, everyone. How about we elders just went ahead? Our presence must be restraining our young ones here. True. I feel rather tired. After all, we've had quite a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Come. Uh. Wait! Father, hmm. why must you leave? It's still too early. The palace dish hasn't arrived yet, and we've always welcomed the New Year together. Jingrui, we're not going to bed yet. Your father and I will just be playing chess at the study. 
and I think your mother and Lady Joie will be chatting for a while. <laughs> and besides, be careful. All right. I'm sure that you boys will feel much more comfortable without us hovering over you here. You're so thoughtful, father-in-law. Come on, I'll show you the Fergana horse I bought you. Oh, it's outside? Of course it is, come on. Oh, great. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Rather this way, after you. Sister, let's go. Why did you come here so early? Where's Jingri? Eugen, you've been good friends for years. You should not quarrel during the new year. This isn't about me and him or even the new year. What happened? Last night, my father stayed up with me. He told me about everything. My father may have neglected me for years, but as his only son, I have neglected my father, too. I have failed to see his regrets and sorrows. So we finally talked and understood each other. That's good, Eugen. You have my eternal gratitude for what you did. You saved my only family. Hey, don't get so serious here. There are many serious issues at the court as it is. And I do not wish to see any problem spur because of it. Even if you say that's your reason, I know that our friendship played a part in that. To be honest, my father still has no regrets about what he was planning to do. But he's very grateful that you stopped him then. <laughs> I know that sounds contradictory, although I am sure that you know how his mind works. Yes. The mind is a very complicated thing. There's more to it than just being good or evil. One cannot always see that. Well, just the same. I'm grateful that you were able to save his life. I'll always remember you for that. As for the future of the kingdom, I will not worry about it. Eugen, that's the best attitude to have. <sighs> it's hard to tell anyway. No one really knows who'll take the throne, or what our fates will be. All I can do now... is follow my heart. That's a great proverb. We should toast to that. Hey, you shouldn't be drinking yet. <laughs> Why don't we just have tea for now? We can also toast with that. <laughs>
Vice Commander, is it them? Yes. It's the team with the eunuch. Who failed to return last night. Monkja! How could you let this happen? I entrusted you the duty of guarding the entire palace area. How could you not have known that those soldiers were being attacked outside the walls? Forgive me, Your Majesty, but I never saw it. Oh, you never saw the attack? We were having a New Year's Eve feast here. Those killers could have gone in here and slaughtered everyone. How can you look after the palace if you fail to notice your own men getting killed? I am at fault, Your Majesty. I'll accept your punishment. For his negligence to his duty, having flopped 20 times. Yes, yes Your, your Majesty. Majesty! Thank you, Your Majesty. Mongche, I'll give you 30 days to investigate this case. You must find those murderers. If you don't, you'll be flogged again. Yes, Your Majesty. Failure. Did you pick them from Prince Jing's garden again? Hmm. Hmm. After we have breakfast, we'll go to Moo Manor. They have prettier flowers. Hmm. Just don't pick any of them. Why? Because you mustn't. Oh. <laughs> My lady, your highness. Sorry to have kept you waiting. I hope that didn't bother you. Oh, no, of course not. It wasn't a long wait. And there's nowhere I need to go to this new year. <laughs> Do come in. Thank you. I heard that Prince Mu likes the Young Fang Bakery desserts, so I brought some along with us. Failure? <laughs> he must have found this place interesting. I hope you won't mind if he plays around here. <laughs> of course not, I don't mind. He can play all he wants. He seems a bit younger than I am, but he's quite skilled at martial arts. So now you admire his skills, yet when I tell you to practice, you'd always get lazy. Oh, it's not that I'm lazy, sister. I just don't have the talent. <laughs> hard work will always make up for that. Since you know you lack the talent, you should work harder to get it. Can you not scold me in front of our guest? You're quite a talented elder sister, your ladyship. <laughs> this way, please. It's been peaceful in the south. Prince Mu has no need to engage in war. He can place his martial arts lesson aside for now. But he should start learning about the tactics of wars and the governance of the state. Did you get what Master Su just said here? Yes, sister. It means I should not only do whatever you say from now on, but whatever he says to me as well. Hmm? Just do whatever is right and fair. All right, all right. It's the first New Year since your highness assumed your title. You must be very busy. I really am. In the past, I thought it would be simple. But now I realize just how much hard work my sister has done. <laughs> well, I'm glad you realize that. But you're still not being prudent enough. That's what I'm worried about. Here. There's no need to worry. He has the mind of a general. All he lacks is the experience. Just hand over some official work for him. I'm sure he'll be able to work it out diligently. Eventually, he would make a great leader. There. See, sister? Master Su has faith in me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> My lady! Lao Wei, what is it? My lady, we just heard that some soldiers were found murdered outside the palace last night. Murdered? Last night? How could there be a murder on New Year's Eve? They were delivering the dishes to all His Majesty's officials just like always. There were 12 teams then. But only 11 of them were able to return. Commander Mong thought it was nothing until they found their bodies this morning. They've obviously been ambushed. Ambushed? ambushed. Those Imperial Guards were among the best. They fought fiercely before they were killed. So their assassin must be highly skilled. Did they search for any evidence lying around? Well, never mind the evidence. Where is Commander Mong? Uh, 
Wait, oh, slow down. Watch your step. There. Be careful. How long do we have to walk? No, I'm almost there. Hold on. Finally. Get him some water. Yes, sir. Oh, slowly, oh. slowly. You didn't deserve this, Commander. You've always been loyal to the Emperor. And you've been doing everything to protect the palace. And if we weren't required to escort the eunuchs, this wouldn't have happened. Escorting them has always been part of our duties every year. I have failed my soldiers. If I had been more responsible, they would still be alive. So His Majesty did not treat me unfairly. Besides, I'm the one who was flogged. Why is it you complaining? Well, at least you survived the floggings. I'll double our patrols today. Just get some rest, Commander. Get some rest. How I wish I could do that. I have been ordered to solve this case in 30 days. If I don't, the flogging will continue. Flog 20 times? Yes. He has 30 days to find the assassin. If he doesn't, he'll face more floggings. The Emperor has no pity at all. La Wei, just wait for more news. Tell us if something else comes up. Yes, my lady. Ching? Huh? Soon this news will start spreading. I don't want any of you here discussing this with anyone. All right. This issue must be difficult for Commander Meng. Do you think that I should intercede to help him? Brother Cho. Brother Xi, how was it? It's just like what we've foreseen. Meng Zhi was flogged 20 times and was ordered to solve the case in 30 days. Well, I was expecting that. So I did not leave any evidence behind and no witnesses. So don't you worry. Meng Zhi will never even suspect us. Hmm. I'm sure he won't, of course. Although I am worried that someone might. Who would that be? Whenever the Emperor wants an investigation solved, he would hire a separate investigator for the case. And knowing his ways, I believe he'll assign an investigating officer who's from the Xuanjing Bureau. Huh. There are no witnesses, nor evidence. So what if the Xuanjing Bureau investigates it? They will not find a thing. That's true. And for this to happen outside the palace, where two princes are fighting for the throne. An accusation can be viewed as an entrapment. You do not need to intercede right now. I'm not that worried about Brother Meng's present situation. I'm more worried about how this will affect the future. Affect the future? That's right. The Emperor has never doubted Brother Meng's ability as the commander of the Imperial Guards until this incident happened. So you're feeling worried that the commander will suffer more floggings if the case isn't solved? If a new murder happens before this is solved, the Emperor will lose all confidence in Brother Meng. That's what I'm really more worried about. What was the assassin after? It's really hard to tell what his real intention is. Perhaps he wants to challenge the Imperial authority. Or perhaps he's testing the security of the palace for some future plan. Or maybe he's aiming to ruin Brother Meng. The game has started, so now, what's the next move in our plan? You have done very well to eliminate six Imperial Guards and a eunuch unseen. So to secure our triumph, my next move will require someone who's as skillful as you. Of course, I will not have you involved because of our family ties. It would be best for us if you ordered your men for that. Oh, now I see. Why you've asked me to recruit some men to bring over here. Are they intended for this purpose? Hmm. That ambush has shaken the Emperor's faith in Meng Zhe. But it is still not enough. Now that we have already started the fire, we just need to toss more wood into it. But then, I'm also sure that Meng Zhu will be tightening his guard now. I don't think it will be easy for my men to do anything. 
within the range of vision of the guards. The palace is quite vast, with many weak spots. Compared to skilled martial artists from the pugilist world, the guards will not stand a chance. And they are out, in the open, while we are hidden.